Close your eyes. Think of the qualities of the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. Gather them together in one word, Buddha, which means awake. Repeat that as you breathe in, as you breathe out, because you want to make your mind awake. As the Buddha said, atahi no nato, the self is its own mainstay, but it can be its mainstay only when it's trained. And of course here, self means your mind. Your mind needs to be able to depend on itself, so it can trust itself. Because we live in a world full of dangers. There's aging, illness, and death all around. But those aren't the really bad dangers. The really bad dangers are the bad examples we see in people's behavior. People acting on greed, people acting on anger, people acting out of delusion. And with all these ex bad examples around us, it's hard not to follow in, especially when some people seem to gain their advantage by being greedy and angry and deluded. But you have to remember, whatever good has come comes that way is not really good. It doesn't really last. The really good things in life come from developing good qualities of your mind. So the goodness has to come from within. Fortunately, we have the example of the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. We have the example of people who followed their practices, followed their teachings. Some of, some of whom are still alive, some of whom have passed away. And out of gratitude to their good example, we try to create a good example in our minds as well. So we can make our goodness independent. So even though other people are breaking the precepts, other people are behaving in an unrestrained way, we know that restraint, in other words, where we keep our less than skillful motives, less than skillful intentions in, in check, that restraint really is good. And John Sawat, when he came to America, that was one of the main themes that he would teach again and again and again. He looked around, he saw people were really not restrained. Whatever came into their minds would come out in their actions, with no sense of what was right, what was wrong, what was skillful, what was not skillful. But you have to ask yourself, when something comes into my mind, where is it coming from? And if I act on it, where is it going to lead? You don't just think the thoughts that you find fun to think. You try to think the thoughts that come from the good parts of the mind that would lead you to do good things. That way you're being responsible. And that way you have a mainstay inside. When you develop this good mainstay inside, then you're a good example to others. You dedicate merit to others and they're happy to receive the current of your mind because it's coming from a good place. You live with other people. They're happy to live with you because they can see that your thoughts, your words, and your deeds are coming from a good place. So create that good place inside. Try to be awake inside. So you can see clearly when an intention comes into the mind, is it going to lead you to do something good or something bad? When you have a sense of well-being, staying here with the breath, coming in, going out with a sense of ease, fullness. Then it's a lot easier to do what you know is the right thing. So trying to develop this quality of the mind, this independence, where you have the resources inside that you've developed that you can really depend on them. And when you can learn how to depend on yourself, then other people can depend on you too. So the goodness spreads around. It's not like we're being selfish and only taking ourselves and doing what's good for ourselves and not caring about other people. Turns out that what's good for ourselves is going to be good for other people too. So focus on the source inside and the good. The good results of focusing on that source will then ripple out.